Pedro Santo details emerging. Pedro Martins linked with manager role. Issues behind the scenes with Victor Orta. This week's loan watch. And Mark Rocca's injury progress. Morning, folks. Jay here on Wednesday, the 15th of February with your Leeds United news. A um, couple of housekeeping things just to get in the way as the channel keeps growing. I keep seeing things in comments just to make things clear. Um, so what we do here is daily Leeds news. And that is anything from rumour to opinion um, to mainstream news that's coming out about Leeds. So I will tell you if I think it's a pinch of salt and probably not true. There's no point in having an argument in the, in the comments about something that's not true or is true or isn't true. This is a entire whatever Leeds news is floating around all of the different sites. I will try and get them all into one place and give it to you in a short amount of time as possible. That's the point of the channel. So so uh, we'll crack on again to this and we'll just we'll talk about a few bits and pieces. And the first thing to speak about I suppose, is last night Leeds made a statement about Michael Scubala, uh, and Scoobs has been given the temporary charge for a little bit longer at Leeds uh, as we head into the Everton and Southampton games. Um, they pretty much stopped short of saying the remainder of the season. They think he's done a decent enough job so far. So do I. Um, I saw some people being very critical of him, saying that we lost points because of Scubala against uh, Manchester United and Ellen Road. Considering when we had Bielsa in charge, they put six goals past us and five goals past us. Scoob Valor managed to get a point out of two games, which is, again, a point more than Bielsa got against Manchester United and a point more than Jesse Marsh got against Manchester United. So uh, I really don't think you can have a pop at Scoob Valor. I think he's done a decent enough job. Players look a bit leggy at times, but outside of that, structure looks decent. Um, and I've, I have no issue. It's a big gamble, but we'll get to that in more detail later on. Um, what they've decided to do is they've decided to stick with this to actually take more time over the process of hiring the right manager and not a knee-jerk reaction to getting a manager we saw that with the shrouder stuff and the response that that got Leeds are trying to avoid that now and what they were saying is they'll be doing these interviews and keeping their, their powder dry and doing this in secret um Ariola, gallardo and slot all keen on the Leeds job but not keen on the Leeds job until the end of the season and have a full summer to work on their plan which is understandable from a coaching and a management perspective. That doesn't leave Leeds in a great perspective. That there is any other, another issue in there somewhere about how Leeds are selling the club to these people. Um, and there's an issue there going back to, to the summer, but we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. So as it is, Scoobs will be in charge for the Everton game. He might get the Southampton game if he can get two decent results there. Maybe he gets to the end of the season. Maybe a couple of people change their mind. Um, I wish him all the best. I hope it does well. Scoobs comes across as a, as a really good guy. As I've always said, anyone in charge of Leeds, I want to be successful. So, you know, he has my backing uh, until he doesn't, I suppose. That's the way it goes, isn't it? Um, he's got a big couple of games coming up. It's a big, big gamble, but let's see how he gets on. So, you know, until we get a proper manager in place, I think we're, we're, I have no issue with Scoobs in charge for now. For now. Uh, moving on, let's talk about Nuno Espirito Santo. And there's an interesting article that came out from 90 Minutes yesterday, and I tweeted it last night. It's not saying that this is going to happen, but it's just a really interesting way of looking at things. And the first time I think this would have happened. So basically 90 minutes of report that Leeds, like Nuno, um, and the Times reported that Leeds have actually held an interview with Nuno. There's conflicting stories on this. The 90 minutes are saying the buyout clause of Nuno's contract is £8 million. The Times are saying it's in around £5.3 million. But what the 90 minute article said was that Leeds and Aliti had are in a weird situation here. Helder Costa is at loan at Al had and is doing quite well there, and they want to keep him permanently. Leeds want Nuno Espirito Santo as their manager, but he is the Al had manager and has a release clause. So, what there is a potential of happening here if, 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 massive if, if this does happen or does move towards Nuno being appointed as, as the next manager, there is a possibility that Leeds could agree to sell Costa permanently to Al had at a discounted rate. In which case, then Al Ittihad would reduce the release clause for Nuno to allow him to go to Leeds. So it's two separate deals, but it's the first time I've ever looked at a deal where I went, this is a player for manager swap deal, essentially, in its essence. Um, it's two different deals when you break it down. And I know that. So don't go after me in the comments for it. It's, it's a different thing. I get that. Um, but it's an interesting perspective. It's an interesting way of looking at this. That Leeds could maybe get past this buyout clause thing by just giving a player that has no future at Leeds and isn't probably going to get much of a, a transfer fee at the end of the season anyway. So it's an interesting one. The Times, however, they are saying that Leeds are reported that they have spoken with Nuno and have had interviewed him and um, that his buyout clause is £5.3 million. Pounds. There's more, not a huge amount more information on that bit from the Times, but there is interest. 
So that's that one. Moving on, and a new, a new name that popped up last night and is coming to the uh, the view probably uh, clearer this morning is uh, Pedro Martins. Uh, according to Zero Zero journalist Pedro de Cuna, so again, massive pinch of salt. It's not from a normal, reputable source, but it is coming from a person we can actually identify. Um, Leeds have made an informal approach for the former Olympiacos head coach. Um, he is currently at Al Jaffa in Qatar and is apparently committed to the process over there. You know, big bag of money, you'd be committed to any process, wouldn't you? Um, he hasn't got any real big clubs on his CV, but he has stayed at places for quite a long time. He was at Martino for four years. He was at Olympiacos for four years. He was at Gumaris for a couple of years as well. Um, and he has won some titles. He won two titles in Greece, and he's been runner-up in Portugal a couple of times as well. And he was the Greek manager of the year in the 1920 and 2021 season. So there's a little bit of um, a background there, but, you know, very, very pressurized jobs. There's a picture of him on screen here now looking like Ronnie Whelan in 1988. Um it would split. It would split. I mean, he was a decent player in his day as well. And, um, you know, I, play, I think he played in the same Portuguese team as Rui Costa. And that was a good team at the time. So um, there is some pedigree there in terms of, of footballing understanding. Um, but he probably would split the fan base in terms of, you know, not being a huge name or whatever. But uh, currently in Qatar, wait and see what happens with there. Um, moving on then from the manager stuff and moving away. And let's talk about some real Leeds news, which it's nice to get back to for a change. I thought we'd be here weeks ago. And um, some smalls of Lone Watch. Joffy played his second uh, start had a second start, sorry, for Sunderland at last night. He played 80 minutes in the game, yet to score for Sunderland, but um, is doing well, doing okay, and looking sharp. Um, he has had two games where he's at 80 minutes under his belt in each game. So, um, good stuff for uh, Joffy. Uh, Jack Clark scoring twice, another ex Leeds player scoring twice uh, in that game. Uh, Charlie Creswell, 90 minutes under his belt again, back to back matches for Charlie, and he seems to just be starting to settle into his, his, his skin in Millwall a bit. Um, some of the reports I've seen coming out from some of the Millwall fans is he's been very good over the last couple of games, which is great to see. He's learning, developing, and getting better. So, again, the whole point of these loan moves is to get these players out so they can get better and learn and, you know, get their mistakes out of their way somewhere else. So, um, by all accounts, uh, Kresge is starting to look a bit better, starting to settle in a bit more, look more, and growing in the in the loan, which, again, is expected and what you want to happen. So, uh, moving on, uh, let's talk about Victor Orta real quick before we wrap this up. And there are question marks over Victor Orta's handling of the Leeds managerial situation, as well as some other bits and pieces at the moment. Um, Schroeder was his man. He backed Schroeder. He wanted him. He was green lighting the move um, before he was over overruled. He also was the man who was the last man standing, apparently, when it came to Jesse Marsh, that despite the fact that the board were actually looking at, at Sack and Jesse as early as the start of January, um, Victor wanted to stick with him and thought that this was he would get us to where we needed to get there. And a lot of us thought that it would click at some point, but then the Nottingham Forest game happened and there was just no more excuses and no more road. So Jesse just ran a road at Leeds. The Times are saying that his decision to extend Michael Scubala's D at the stunt at the at the club has raised some question marks behind the scene. We talked yesterday and there's a lot of rumor going around, and it is rumor, so just to be clear on that, there is a split in the Leeds board at the moment, and there's some issues in the Leeds board. So um, apparently there are some question marks behind his handling of this and um, Leeds inability to sell the club to potential new managers is also coming into focus as a, a bit of a problem. You know, you look at what Bielsa said about Leeds and he said a club with the history of Leeds United comes looking for you. It's very hard to say no. Leeds have seen pretty quickly over the course of the last week or two that managers saying no to Leeds very quickly. So there's a reason for that. It's possibly the position of the league. But I think if you look at the performances of the team, and you look at the players that are there. A really good coach would look at that as a project and go, yeah, I can get a tune out of these guys. There's good players there. So there's that pit. There's also when you take it back a step and you look at what happened during the summer, the Charles the Kettler stuff, the Cody Gakpo stuff, and the Bamba Dieng stuff, there was an inability to close um, on these negotiations. And there seems to be an inability to close in the manager situation as well. So there is a pattern emerging in, in, in the negotiation stuff in the back with Victor Orta. Um, I've gotten pretty heavy on Vic over the last couple of, of days. I, look, I think at the moment there's a problem behind the scenes there. I think um, Vic's involved in this. A couple of really good signings that probably, you know, saved him. If you look at the Bielsa, Bielsa being at the club made Victor Orta bulletproof for essentially three years. And, um, he had similar issues and question marks over the quality of his signings when he was at Middlesbrough. There were issues there, but been going into the dressing room and speaking to managers um, and talking to players after games and a half time matches. So there's, there's, there were issues at Middlesbrough as well when he left there. I think he kind of, there was a huge amount of swell for him to be sacked at Leeds before Bielsa came in. And Bielsa seemed to just save his job for a bit and keep him going. A couple of good signings along the way. And it must be said he has got some good young signings. 
but not every sign has been a hit. There's been a lot of misses as well. So there are some question marks being asked about Victor behind the scenes. Um, if Skubala gets a good result against Everton, and if he gets a decent result against Southampton potentially, then this gamble pays off. It's but it but make no mistakes about this. And as much as I am behind Michael Skubala, this is a huge gamble, and it is a huge gamble. Um, if it pays off, Victor gets away with it. Looks okay. You might get Scoob at the end of the season. Leeds could be fine. Look for a proper manager in the summer, apparent manager in the summer. If it doesn't pay off, and the gamble backfires, and we get beaten by Everton and Southampton, we're in serious trouble. And then this whole situation starts to get you know, a little bit more toxic than it currently is. It, it's it's a, it's a powder keg right now, and it's it's bubbling every now and then. It bubbles a little bit more, but ultimately it hasn't boiled over just yet completely. And um, You just don't want to see that Ellen Road. You just don't want to see Ellen Road turn. We've all been there. We've seen it happen. Um, but yeah, so big gamble. Question marks over what's going on behind the scenes with Vic. We'll have to wait and see. Fingers crossed everything gets ironed out and sorted in a couple of days, and we just relax and, and start watching football again and, and get rid of all this nonsense on the outside so and then finally just to give you an update an injury update on mark rocket so he's missed the last two games against manchester united with a slight muscle injury um but looking at his instagram post yesterday in training he looks like he's ready to go he said that he is uh ready to go so fingers crossed rocket gets through the week okay and we might actually finally see that three-man midfield of, of rocket mckenney and adams which i'm really excited to see Anyway, that's going to be it. Slightly longer one today, but a lot of news floating around today, so I wanted to cover it off. Um, as always, thanks for watching the channel. If you like what we do here, you can give the thumbs up or you can subscribe to the channel if you want to. Um, and I'll be back tomorrow morning with more Leeds news. See you then. Bye.